when you draw, the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of an atom? <laughs> Can you hold it up the camera? Very basic drawing. <laughs> if you want it the first thing, yes. I could do it more sophisticated. <laughs> things with the electrons whizzing around it. The, cl the cliched atom, exactly. The classical sort of like cartoon atom that you see sort of like coming out of atomic bomb explosions in cartoons. Mm -hmm. My name is Jonathan Tennyson, I'm a Master Professor of Physics. I work on the physics of small molecules. Uh, my name is Thomas, uh, and I'm studying accounting. Hi, I'm Dr. Lauren Kemish. I'm a research fellow at University College London in the Department of Physics and Astronomy. Yes, yeah, so all my work is to do with simulating atomic systems and molecular collisions and things like that. I'm George Munsell, I study biomedical sciences second year. Uh, I do history. I'm Caitlin, I do history of art. Hi, my name is Daniel Darby. I am a PhD student. I am studying beryllium monohydride and electron collisions with this molecule. It's just one of the earliest pictures of an atom that I saw that had components of an atom to it. So, in terms of like the first thing that occurs to you when you think of how an atom looks, mm -hmm. it's still, despite the fact that you know you've got you're head full of quantum theory and wave functions and wibbly wobbly bits that don't actually fit in bits and pieces. You still think of just bits and pieces when you think of an atom. This just seems like a fairly standard model of an atom. Nucleus in the middle, protons, neutrons, uh, electrons. I uh, drew a random one that has the nucleus and it has the same number of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus. Okay. And then it has the same number of electrons orbiting the nucleus as protons. No, but like it would have like eight written in the middle, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, the atoms have spherical symmetry. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, they do have some structure inside the atom in terms of having a condensed nucleus and an electron cloud. But if you ask for a very simple representation, that's very cool. It's the most basic sort of picture of an atom which captures the essential elements being protons and nuclei, being that the atom is not this inseparable thing, but that it is what we're going to be things which can be understood further. Okay, so what are, the, what are the key differences, you think, between the picture you draw and what an atom in the vertical is really looks like? All these electrons actually don't go around in circles, they're sort of distributions of charges. So it's actually that the electrons are in wave, are distributed around the molecule in different ways. So it's fuzzy, and it, you know what I've drawn there looks like a billiard ball, but in practice, it, the electron distribution is a distribution, so it, it's it's slightly soft at the edges. I think the electrons are more, in terms of, they're more like a density rather than a fixed position. As in, you can't accurately say they're in a like a definite point in space. Well, I think it's kind of weird to ask what an atom actually looks like because at that point you, you can't see anything. So you can't see Oh yeah, that's the trick, isn't it? You uh -huh. can't see it. <laughs> it's, it's really more sort of what a picture is in your head of the reality and it's not. There is no actual look to an atom. <laughs> Pesky little thing. <laughs> it's just a very simplified version of it, isn't it? For like GCSE students and undergrad history students. <laughs> because um, in the case of an atom, they're not orbiting in this stupid way that mm -hmm. we are doing graphically. Mm -hmm. You need to imagine that the electrons are having a very random motion. I should know this. I did chemistry last year, this is terrible. Oh uh, yeah, you obviously go deeper. Well. <laughs> I'd still put the nucleus, I guess. Wait, how do the rings look? So there's like, there's two, I don't know. Clouds of electrons, somehow density clouds, like... I think there's two rings. No. I know there's like orbitals and stuff, like P orbitals and that stuff. Oh, they, there you go. I don't even do this Density, electron density around the nucleus. 
<laughs> as in like, um, as in like, and then rainies like that around it. Oh, okay. Is what I remember. <laughs> I was thinking of a Venn diagram. <laughs> First thing I'd add would be a nucleus. Mm -hmm. It's a, a point charge in the centre. Then maybe with a different colour, you have some sort of charge cloud around it. So you have something which looks like that as a second level of second level of complication. And I think you only get deeper than that, it's go beyond pictures and into, into formulae. Right. What kind of image do you have in your head when you're actually doing the work than what's actually working with the atoms? So the picture that I have when I'm doing simulating molecular systems is very much of nuclei wherever they happen to be and the electrons arranging themselves around those nuclei um, in such a way that you minimise the energy of the whole system. Well, a lot of what I deal with is programming. So when I think of my molecule, when I think of it, I think of it more in terms of code than I actually do in terms of a molecule. Because as much as you want to think about that, it's not going to help you actually program the thing. What does that, what does that look like to you? What, what's kind of the, the image? Um, is, is there an image at all? Yes, there's definitely an image of a spread out electron. I guess to me, atoms are very visual objects, but it's sort of something that I see in my mind rather than something that I can really draw on a bit of paper. You when you start writing down uh, configurations, take like eon for example as a, as a configuration, and that is that is still already still an approximation. And going beyond that is actually quite difficult to write in, in simple notation. You tend to need computers to do it. Mm -hmm. I think if you're interested, you should read the uh, Feynman's lectures on physics. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs>